All right, just going to do a video refuting Brian Denlinger and his twisting of Romans 14.5 and his lies about the origins of Christmas. You see, Brian Denlinger is very, very prideful and arrogant, and he doesn't want to take any correction. And people have tried to correct him. Numerous other brethren have tried to correct him on this Christmas issue, and he just will not take any correction. Because he's puffed up with pride, he's very high-minded, and he just thinks he's always right. And if you, don't, if you don't agree with him, you're in sin, basically, for not agreeing with him. And numerous brethren who have been very close to him have now been stabbed in the back by his followers and him because they just lovingly tried to rebuke him on Christmas. But I'm going to show this video where he is going over the, the Christmas debate where he, I'm going to show you where he, at one point he flat out defends Saturnalia at one point. And he lies about, about oh, it's, it, like he tries to make it out like it's not like Roman Catholic holiday. And he lies about the origins of it. And he totally ignores the facts because he's too prideful to take any correction. And uh, I'm just going to come out and say it, you know, I honestly don't know if he's saved or not, okay? I'm not going to say he's lost, but quite frankly, I just don't know if he's saved, okay? I want to hope he's saved, but quite frankly, the way he's been behaving recently, he's really given the impression that he might not be saved. Okay, I'm, again, I'm not like him, okay? I'm not like him or his followers who just call everybody lost who, don't, who doesn't believe like me, but just the way, the fruit he's producing, the, the kind of wickedness that comes out of his ministry, it's seriously looking like he's not saved, I'm going to play this video and just show, watch watch his, his foolish arguments he tried to use and just stupid reasoning. I mean, there's no nice way to put it. It's just stupid. And he totally lies and twists Romans chapter 14, verse 5 to justify his sin. What's your appetite? Oh, all this this pagan stuff about Saturnalia and about, and about Yule, you know. Oh, it's just all oh, these pagan things and everything else. Really? Uh, where'd you get your information from? Well, I get it from this writer and that this website and that thing and there and whatever else. Are you aware? Because I've been reading this and researching this stuff and everything else. Are you aware that a lot of the things about Yule, the supposed pagan traditions and the you know human sacrifice rituals and everything else that you hear about, are you aware that it was actually written down by a Catholic? Yeah, why was it written down by a Catholic, Brian? Because they just took that tradition and Christianized it. You see, Brian Dillinger is just a Roman Catholic, okay? He may preach against Catholicism a lot, but really, he, just, he is still observing Roman Catholic traditions. His cult behaves very Roman Catholic. And this Christmas holiday is a Roman Catholic holiday. So if he's, if he's so against the Catholics, what's he doing celebrating Christmas? And he lies about that and says, oh, it's not a Catholic holiday. He's a liar, and he's too prideful and arrogant to give up his sin. A um, Icelandic former Viking that became was converted to Catholicism, Snorri... Uh, Strolson in the yeah, and, and why was it why was he writing about that because the Catholics just took that tradition and Christianized it but Brian won't tell his followers that because he wants to cover it up to lead them astray too to observe this heathen custom and get them in his sin I think in the early 1200s that's where the all the poetic Eddas is one of the, one of the things that he would that he wrote that's where you hear about Yule those are the oldest writings about Yule and the practices of Yule. Okay, it's not just Yule. It's borrowed from also ancient traditions that go before this writing. You see, Brian Dilling is lying and covering up facts. He's not showing everything that those of us who rightfully criticize Christmas will bring out. You see, there's writings that show Christmas, uh, you know, again, Alexander Hislop's book, The Two Babylons, goes into extensive detail about the heathen origins of Christmas well before 1200, okay? Well before, there's an instance well before 1200. So Brian is lying and covering up stuff to deceive his audience. Hmm. Just like the things that he wrote about the Vikings, the different sagas and eddas and all that other stuff. I uh, find it interesting that it would be a Catholic, something sanctioned by the Catholic Church, about these heathen pagan people out there. Yeah, why was it sanctioned by the Catholic Church, Brian? Because they took that tradition and Christianized it. You know? But you see, you're too arrogant to give up your heathen papist traditions. Oh, you can trust them. They would never, you know, twist the facts to make those people look bad. You know, yeah, kind of like how you're twisting the facts, Brian, to get people observing this heathen custom and leading them astray. You know, everything that Brian's saying, I can just throw right back at him. That's how much of a hypocritical, you know, Pharisee that he is. He's wicked. He's too prideful and high-minded about himself. He just thinks if you try to correct him, that's why, you know, if, if any of his followers don't like me saying this kind of stuff, it just shows you're a respecter of person towards Brian. I'm going to come out and say his name, Phil Randon. Okay, he's a follower of Brian. He's left some very nasty comments on my videos because why? I kicked his idol, Brian. And many of Brian's followers, they get really mad when he kicked their idol. 
they don't, they don't like it when you kick their sin and kick their idol. You see, they'll point out your sin all day long. They'll call you lost over your sin. But the moment you kick their sin, they get really mad. They don't like it being done back to them. They don't like it when someone kicks their idol. Bunch of hypocritical Pharisees is what they are. And you know, it's so funny because, oh, Christmas is so pagan, it's horrible, it's Saturnalia, it's Yule, it's all this other stuff. Um, how many of you out there ever saw anything really horrible or bad, satanic ritual type of stuff or whatever at Christmas time? I don't know of anybody. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't happen, Brian. You see how prideful he is? Oh, because I don't see it. That means it's not, that means it must be so. What an arrogant little jerk. It actually went through that stuff. Me personally from my childhood, living locally and whatever else. Uh, you know the funny thing? Every family had a different celebration. We all did different things. Oh, you do this at Christmas? Yeah, we don't really, we do that. Do you realize what you're even saying when you say Christmas? I'm going to show you what the word Christmas means and why it's actually blasphemous to say it. Okay, Brian Dillinger does not even know what he's saying when he says Merry Christmas to people. He doesn't realize the blasphemous connotations of what he's saying. Because why? He's too arrogant and high-minded to actually see his own errors. Do, do, if it's some kind of a satanic ritual thing or the mass of Christ, wouldn't it be the same thing forever? Um, yes, it is the mass of Christ, Brian. And the reason why I thought the same thing is because Satan just repackages things. You, I, I think you. I would assume you've known that, considering how many years you've supposedly been in ministry. But you're proving how much of a novice you are right now, Brian. Buddy, why does everybody kind of make up their own uh, thing with feasting and getting together with family and giving of gifts? And oh, so then you. Oh, so it's your personal preference then. So my personal preference, because I'm doing it for this reason, therefore it's okay. So your personal preference determines it, apparently. Hmm. Clutching at straws to really con to condone his sin. So now all of a sudden your personal preference is what determines it, not what the facts of history and also what the scripture I'm going to show uh, that he likes ripping out of context really say. So really, Brian Dillinger is not much different than any atheist out there because his personal preferences dictate whether Christmas is okay or not. Because it doesn't matter if it's heathen, if I'm doing it because, you know, this reason or whatever. By the way, you know, of course he just denies that it's heathen at all. But here's the thing too, you don't get to just observe any custom you want and slap Jesus on it and just think, okay, it's Christian now. That's not how it works. You don't just get to observe, I mean, by that logic, I guess we can just do Halloween now too, because as long as we just slap Jesus Christ on it, then I guess we can just do Halloween now. And some Christians are doing that now. Some Christians are actually uh, handing out gospel tracts on trick-or-treating. Why are you doing that? You're still participating in that, that satanic custom of Halloween. But by his, if we're going to go by this logic of I'm just going to slap Jesus Christ on it and therefore it's okay, then I guess we can celebrate Halloween. I guess we can celebrate any other occult holiday. You see, Brian is clutching at straws, and now it just down to his personal preference dictates whether it's okay or not. Got a lot of pride issues right there, Brian. And I pray the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't repent of this, I pray the Lord Jesus Christ uh, chastens you severely. Whatever. Oh, and one last one point I want to make up too, I want to just point out, just because you're older, Brian, does not mean you're above taking reproof or correction. You see, Brian, again, it just his pride. He thinks that basically because he's older, that younger brethren who know the scriptures as well can't reprove him. You know, when Tim, when Brother Tim tried to correct him, Brian constantly was saying, I'm older than you. What are you doing talking down to me? I'm older than you. Hey, just because you're older does not mean you're above taking receiving correction. You know, it just shows how prideful he is. You know, and, and by the way, too, on the same note, Brian Dillinger attacked uh, Alexander Hartley. Alexander Hartley is nearly two decades older than Brian. So, Brian, where's your respect for your elders? Huh? You want everyone to respect you because of your age. What are, you, what are you doing disrespecting Alexander Hartley? He's older than you, Brian. Wicked hypocrite. That's what he is. And, and why are you being so harsh? Because he's leading his followers astray. And if any of his followers get on this video and you don't, you don't like what I'm saying, you got to repent because you're, you're just showing you're a respecter of persons. As most of the followers are, they don't want to hear anything bad about their idol. That's why. Because it's liberty. Right? And the reason I called this thing the, the Christmas debate, this study here, is because, like I said at the beginning, that's all this is. It's a debate. It's a useless, pointless thing that you can go back and forth on. I could... Uh, then why are you doing a whole video on it then? If, if, it's, if there's no point of going back and forth on it, why are you doing videos on it? Why are you calling up brethren who, who disagree with you on it? And who lovingly try to correct you on it if it's if it's not some big issue if it's just some worthless debate, huh? Wow. Give you a whole slew of reasons why you should celebrate Christmas, if you're of 
Northern Europe. Yeah, if you're a Roman Catholic. Oh, look, look what he says. If you're of Northern European, what European he says. heritage, by the way, too. If you're. Hey, let, let me just rewind that. I can't rewind that. All this thing, the, the Christmas debate, the study here, is because, like I said at the beginning, that's all this is. It's a debate. It's a useless, pointless thing that you can go back and forth on. I could give you a whole slew of reasons why you should celebrate Christmas. If you're of Northern European heritage, by the way, too. If you're So, in other words, that determines whether it's okay or not. Your personal preferences, once again. So, not what the history, the facts of history say. Not what the Bible says about, you know, and of course, they'll try to say, well, Jeremiah chapter 10 is not, uh, not speaking to Christians. Hey, instruction in righteousness. Don't observe the way of the heathen. You know, if we're going to go by his logic, I guess we can just observe heathen. I guess, again, by his logic, we can start observing Halloween now, too. Because, hey, it's heathen, but who cares? We'll just slap some Jesus Christ on it, and now it's okay now. That's, that's worth leading. You know, people will get this impression that they can just start celebrating anything now. Because, hey, I'm just esteeming one day above another. We're going to, again, we're going to look at Romans 14.5 in context and see what it's actually saying. Because Brian Dillon rips this one verse out of context to deceive his followers. And, to, and makes this whole thing out of this one verse totally out of context which is what any cult leader does they base their doctrine off one verse out of context it's what the catholics do it's what the mormons do it's what the jehovah's witnesses do it's what the charismatics do it's what the pentecostals do and it's what brian dillinger does too shemitic or hamitic or whatever else don't waste your time with christmas it's not part of your ancestry but i give you a whole list of reasons why you should or we could say can celebrate christmas but then the others can say, well, we here's the reasons why. And, what, and it just gets into this debate, and it's pointless. It goes back and forth. And you just end up with a headache at the end, and people angry at each other and calling each other lost and heretic. And Yeah, you kind of like how you do, Brian, how you call people lost who don't agree with you. Kind of like how you attack Alexander Hartley and Accountable KGB by name, and to attack Philip Newton by name and Eric John Phelps by name because they, they just disagree with you on Christmas. Yeah, kind of like how you do, Brian. But you're too prideful to see your own error and hypocrisy. Whatever else. It's nonsense. The whole stinking thing. But let's look here in the Bible and let's go to the Bible for our standards. Acts chapter 15. Sorry, my cat is meowing if you can hear it in the background. Acts chapter 15. We're going to read the whole chapter. He goes to Acts 15 and makes the argument that, well, the, the uh, Jewish customs, and he makes a argu big argument about the, the, how the, the Gentiles were, how, the, how there was no issue with observing the Jewish customs or whatever. Um, which is kind of a weird argument he tries to make, but I'm going to go where he tries to use Romans 14, 5. Acts chapter 15, act like a Jew or else you came up and said unto them of the Lord Jesus. Lord. What do you call a saved Gentile? You call him a Christian. You know, even though accountable KJV, King James, I was corrected on it. And I said, okay, I'll take the study down. But some of them just latched on to Okay, well, watch this. He, he goes on to something. This wasn't actually in my notes. I just want to show this part real quick. James answered, saying, Men and brethren, gee God, gee God, take out of them a people for his name, and to this we do with all these things. Let me just pause there for a minute. Another one, this Brad Evanshire guy, this accountable KJV, he's coming out now and saying, you can't be called a Christian anymore. Christian is for church people, lost people, whatever else, and it's only, see people have to be called uh, Church of the Living God. Because I did a study about that, and there's some other guys out there that are saying, um, that you know how dare brian have backed off on this whole thing we're the church of the living god we're not christians i made a mistake with that study and i was corrected on it and i said okay i'll take the study down but some of them just latched on to it because it helps you to really that was one of the few times he's ever taken correction by the way most of the time he never takes any correction okay tim tried to correct him others to try to correct him so that that is just one example of just a few examples where he's actually taking correction because believe me i've seen him people try to correct him and he just won't take it a lot of times move yourself into a special little group where it's only you and all this other stuff you know a lot of people that think that of me if you would actually come and talk to me and actually contact me and whatever else you'd find out that no i'm not that way well maybe you're not meant to be that way but a lot of your followers are a lot of your followers just call people lost who speak against you so you may not be that way, but a lot of your followers are guilty of that 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 uh, behavior. But whatever. The whole point is there. Look at the verse. All the Gentiles upon whom my name well, is and by called. Way, so I want to also point out too. You know, I actually do agree with him though. That accountable KGV making this big issue about oh you shouldn't you shouldn't be calling yourself Christians. I agree with Brian Dillinger. Like for once, I actually do agree with Brian Dillinger. Probably the one thing he said in this video, I actually agree with him on. That yeah, accountable KGV is making this big issue about this this calling yourself a Christian, it's, it's really just 
it's it's unbiblical and it's 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 just a bunch of unscriptural uh nonsense but you know besides the point brian dillinger is lying and he's attacking people while, while complaining why you're attacking me why you're attacking me maybe because you're doing it to everybody else brian maybe because your wicked followers are going out and just calling people lost who don't believe like you and who try to lovingly correct you a lot of times this is the marks of a pope right here called saith the lord what do you call a saved gentile you call him a christian church of the living god so what are you a little god or something going on? no christian the disciples were called christians first at antioch if any man suffers a christian let him glorify god on this behalf you know christian there's nothing wrong with calling yourself christian but you know these guys come out now and oh you can't call yourself a christian you yeah no, no here i agree with them okay just want to point that out again you can't call this book the bible it has to be the scriptures you know even though accountable KJV, King James Version, you know, is not in the scriptures. So, see, here's the whole thing. Our arguments have to be logical. They have to make sense. And I don't mean... Yeah, they have to make sense, Brian. You know, but defending a heathen holiday doesn't make any sense. And your arguments don't make any sense when you're defending this wicked holiday. It makes sense to the lost world because, you know, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. I get that, but what I'm saying is, you start getting into some of these weird argument type of things, you end up making a mess of yourself. You just... You're kind of like how you're doing in this video, Brian. Everything he's saying, I can just throw right back at him. It's insane. Make a mess of any kind of ministry that you want, because you're contradicting yourself, and, and that's what this whole anti-Christmas thing does. I mean, you go out to some lost person and say, hey, I'm against Christmas. They're not going to look at you and say, oh, you must really be saved. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. That's all you just Actually, the majority of atheists actually make fun of Christians for celebrating Christmas because they, they even atheists know it's a pagan holiday. And, and you, look, there's these atheist billboards who are, who are basically saying it's a pagan holiday. You know, people make, there, there have been many atheists and many, you know, actual Nordic pagans who make fun of Christians for celebrating this holiday. They'll say, huh, Christians, look, they're, they're celebrating our holiday and they don't even know it. I dare say that not celebrating Christmas makes you more look like a saved person because you're abstaining from the ways of the world. Just clutching at straws to defend his heathen holiday. That's what he's doing. And Brian is just totally ignorant of the facts. What is my cat doing? Oh, was what does? nuts. Oh, you're an atheist. That's what they're going to think. But, you know, again, proving right there, verse 17, all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called... Christian, not a big deal. You don't want to call yourself a Christian? Call yourself a member of the Church of the Living God, or I'm, you know, whatever. But I've, again, I've been contacted by so many people over the years. Brother, should we be calling ourselves Christians and whatever else? And verse eighteen: Known unto God are all His works from the beginning of the world, where and from fornication and became. You know, they, they blended Saturnalia, Yule, and they put it together. Okay, and now, now here, watch me lies about the facts. I'm, I'm just going to go back a few, a little bit. And from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. And holidays. Holidays are very important to abstain from, because they're pagan. And I mean, by the way, uh, at this time of this writing, uh, Saturnalia was being practiced. It was actually a B.C. practice. Now, now watch as he actually defend Saturnalia. Okay, he'll try, he'll probably lie and say, oh, I'm not defending Saturnalia. Watch as he actually defends it and says, well, they were celebrating it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that because they were celebrating for different reasons. Watch his arguments. It's insane. Before Jesus Christ showed up on the earth, they were doing Saturnalia. As long as the Romans were there, they were practicing Saturnalia. Um, why didn't they mention it? And they say, well, Saturnalia eventually became, you know, they, they blended Saturnalia, Yule, and they put it together and made it Christmas or whatever else. It's a winter festival is all that it, all that it is. Because in the north, if you live in the north, you understand that the day... Yeah, and why do you celebrate on December 25th, Brian? Okay, how, you know, Jesus Christ, okay, show me script, scriptures, because if we're going to make this about Jesus Christ's birth, show me a book, chapter, and verse that says that Jesus Christ was born on December 25th. Okay. Again, you don't just get to observe heathen customs and slap Jesus on it and think it's okay. But this is exactly what Brian is saying. He can deny it all he wants. He'll probably lie and say, oh, it's not what he's saying. No, he is defending a heathen holiday and just simply saying, just slap Jesus Christ on it and that's fine. Days get really dark early 
And so it gets kind of gloomy and kind of depressing and whatever else. And you also have all the harvest time and then the hunting time in the fall. And you go into a time where you want to have a feast. Get everybody together and celebrate after all the hard work. That's all it is. <laughs> okay? Oh, well, Saturnalia is a pagan festival and horrible, terrible things and went on there and everything. Well, I'm sure with some people. But don't tell me all Europeans were going around ritualistically sacrificing their children or something. So in other words, we can celebrate Saturnalia. You see what he's saying right there? He's saying that if we do it for, I guess, pure motives, we can celebrate it. That's what he's, that was what he's subliminally saying right there. He is defending Saturnalia. Openly defending it. As long as we just celebrate it for, for different reasons, we can just observe it. He is learning the way of the heathen. Just right there, he's defending it. You know, it's nonsense. Where's your proof? Oh, that's right. What the Catholic Church wrote through Snorri Sturluson. You see the, the shaky foundation that these people have? I mean, well, we have witchcraft to think. Okay, what's witchcraft's oldest books? A couple hundred years old? <laughs> um, are you blind, Brian? Witchcraft is mentioned in, the, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, thousands of years ago. I mean, seriously, his arguments are so idiotic. Okay. Witchcraft is mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy 18, chapter 18. That's, that's way before the Middle Ages, Brian. So yes, witchcraft has existed before that. And yes, pagan customs existed before that, Brian. I mean, seriously, these idiotic arguments are just making, give me a headache. That's how stupid they are. He's just clutching at straws in like insanity. That's uh, no, no, no nice way to put it. He's clutching at straws to defend his heathen custom because he's too arrogant to give it up. They don't have anything. You don't have no idea what those ancient heathen uh, Europeans were doing. So if you oh. have no idea why, you, why you're saying we can celebrate it then, Brian? Huh? Flawed arguments. Don't tell me that they were all just these horrible, evil, you know, terrible people. That's stupid. You can't prove that. So basically our personal, pre again, it goes back to our personal preference. If we celebrate it for different reasons, we can observe it. It just, it just, you know, do what the devil should be the whole of the law. That's all it is. It's satanic philosophy of Aleister Crowley. Do what the devil should be the whole of the law. Brian Dillinger is preaching the satanic philosophy of Aleister Crowley. If you think it's okay, then just do it. That's what it comes down to. Doesn't say much about your ancestry either, by the way, if you're white, European. But uh, continuing here, verse 21. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased at the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surnamed Barsabbas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner, the apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as ye... Okay, I want to go to the part where he quotes Romans 14, verse 5. Gentiles that would have come down through... To talking about the Christmas tree thing here, Jeremiah chapter 10. This continued in Antioch, teaching amended by the brethren. Go to Romans chapter 14. Okay, now watch as he rips Romans 14, 5 totally out of context because he was grasping any straw he can find. He can find off the trash can to defend his heathen holiday. Watch, watch this, this idiotic twisting of the verse. But again, you see there, if holidays are such a big deal, if there's some kind of a big thing of, oh, you have to stay away from Saturnalia, why wouldn't they have named it? Uh, you should stay away from Saturnalia. But again, with Brian, it's your personal preference. I get, just keep in mind, he is defending Saturnalia. If you celebrate it for different reasons than the pagans do, you can observe it. Well, then by that same logic, we can just celebrate Halloween now. Because as long as you celebrate it for different reasons, we can just observe it. Now, I know that's not what he said word for word. Okay, I understand that. But that is what he is teaching. That you can, it just, it just, your personal preferences are what dictates whether it's okay or not. Why wouldn't they have said you have to forsake all your, your uh, holidays and feast days and everything else? Why? Isn't that kind of odd? You so know, in other words, if the Celtic pagans were celebrating Halloween, which they did, uh, they don't have to forsake it because after all, the Bible doesn't, doesn't say they have to forsake it. That's where it's leading. By this same logic, we can celebrate Halloween now. That's what it is. Um, there's another way to look at this whole anti-holiday thing, and that is that uh, you're supposed to give up your culture. Um, giving up your culture... When your culture contradicts the scriptures, yes. If it doesn't, then, it, then keep it. Okay, Christmas is anti-biblical, so you have to give it up. Okay, you know, 
obviously I, I, I am Slavic, okay? I'll just point that out, I am Slavic, and I do value my Slavic culture. I do value my Slavic European culture. But if something in there contradicts scripture, you know, scripture trumps all of it, okay? I am, you know, one thing I do like about my Slavic culture is I like how it's very socially conservative, uh, women dress modestly, uh, you know, obviously, you know, it's just very socially conservative, I'll just put it that way. Uh, women dress modestly, men work hard, men are expected to work, I do value that of my Slavic culture, but stuff in there that does contradict scripture, so my final standard is the word of God, which apparently is not the case with Brian, though, he can observe his Germanic traditions, uh, even if they contradict scripture, or if they're not found in scripture. Culture and all coming together uh, is a kind of a problem. God doesn't want that. God created the unique cultures out there. But uh, let's read here. Romans chapter 14, beginning in verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Vegetarian versus eating meat. Right? Again, uh, Philip Newton, the one time I heard him, and he went off on this thing about if you're eating herbs, that proves because you're sick, so it's just sort of an herbal remedy. That's not what it's saying. It's not at all what it's saying. Verse 3, Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Right? Let me just stop there for a minute and tell you a little story here. Um, knew some lost people out in Montana. My okay, older, um, knew some lost people out in Montana. My brother and his wife, for my brother and all the people that claim to be saved out there. use that skillet. Else and lights and I won't talk about it. I'm adult enough I can do that. But okay, I'm, now here's where he twists Romans 14, verse 5. Finally find the part. This video's been going way longer than I originally planned. But finally found that part where he twists Romans 14, 5 and lies about it. I'm not going to, you know, curse at somebody and, oh, how dare you? How you pagan you? Oh, you, you know. <laughs> Let's look at the thing of holidays here next. Romans chapter 14, verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another man, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. <laughs> how don't people get that? I don't understand. How do you not get it, Brian? When you rip it out of context. Let's keep watching. And I have no idea how people cannot understand that. It's plain. There is no condemnation of holidays in Acts 15 when they're sending things to the Gentiles. Obviously, they don't have to condemn Jews because, that you know, you go through the, the book of Acts, you go through the Gospels, and Jesus is celebrating the Jewish feast days. Paul's celebrating the Jewish feast days. They had no problem with the Jewish feast days, the Jewish holidays. There's no problem. All right? And holy day and holiday is the same thing, by the way. I mean, you can look that up. I mean, you can go through all the proof and everything else, and the people just reject it. I've been back and forth so with these words, guys. Christmas is holy, a holy day, according to him. You know, And again, using secular sources to prove his thing, while accusing those of us who are against Christmas of using secular sources to prove our points. He is a hypocrite. Guys, this debate thing for so many years. I'm so familiar with it. Uh, holiday is and Holy Day are the same thing. Okay, they're, they're right there. Webster's 1828 dictionary. It's right there. You can look it up. The etymology of the word Holy Day turning into holiday, and the, you know we'll be getting into that a little bit here. Okay, 1828 Webster's dictionary is not the final standard, Brian. Idiot. A little while, but these the, all this they just keep on rejecting it and rejecting it and. Yeah, kind of like how you keep rejecting and rejecting reproof against you, Brian. Numerous people have tried to reprove you on this issue and showed you from the Bible, have showed you from history, and you don't want to take it. You're the one that, that's an error here, Brian. You're the one that's in fault. That's why, you know, I'm not going to get into this whole thing, this whole debate and whatever else. I want to show you what the scriptures say. No holidays were mentioned for the Gentiles to abstain from in Acts 15. Not one. There's not anything about you need to get rid of those pagan, you know, holidays and whatever else. There's nothing in there. In there. So according to, so based on what he's saying, we can observe pagan customs now, because the Bible never says we should we should get rid of them, so we can observe them now. That's what he's saying, basically, when you get down to it. You jump over here, Romans 14, where he's speaking to the Romans, you know, that would have been practicing Saturnalia. He never mentions Saturnalia. 
you wonder maybe there could have been people that were doing Saturnalia that were not going into the really wild parties and, and drinking a lot and fornicating and doing whatever else. And it doesn't matter, Brian. If the root is bad, the fruit is bad. Okay. Um, just because people are because just because you think, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to celebrate it for that reason. doesn't mean it's okay. You can't just celebrate a heathen holiday. Okay. Like Romans 14, five is not given that kind of thing. You can't just celebrate a heathen holiday and just say, well, I'm going to do it for different reasons. That's what he's basically saying here. So you can celebrate Saturnalia. Just don't engage all the stuff the pagans do. But who cares? I mean, you know, it's still a pagan holiday, but just don't do the stuff the pagans do on it. But just still observe it. He's defending heathenism. Maybe they just were giving gifts and being very moderate and saying, hey, just we want to get together with our family. See, we've forgotten a couple of things about the ancient... Uh, I know it cheers me up when it's really dark, seeing Christmas, cooking meats, and they're doing all this. You had to go outside of the scriptures to prove it's wrong. Yeah, kind of like how you had to go outside of the scriptures to prove that holy, holy day and holiday are the same thing, Brian. Everything he says, I can just throw right back at him. This is the way it is. And again, if you don't want to celebrate Christmas, you're a single guy or something. We went tracting. Peace suit when he was a newborn baby. Start it. <laughs> Whatever. Not a big deal. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth, eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Make up your own mind. It's not a big deal. Don't fight over it. Okay. So what he does is he he takes these scriptures and just totally isolates them. Let me show you what the word of God says and, and what he's actually not telling his followers. Okay, Romans 14, 5. This is the verse he loves to rip out of context. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Now, Brian takes that and says, see, basically we can observe Saturnalia because let's just, in our own mind, let's just say we're not going to celebrate it for this particular reason. That's basically what he's saying. But notice verse 6, six he doesn't really elaborate much on verse 6. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. Okay, the day is regarded to the Lord. You can't observe a heathen holiday and try to claim you're regarding it to the Lord. It's not how it works, Brian. You can't take Saturnalia, which is a holiday with fornication and, and all kinds of drunkenness and everything, and say, oh, I'm going to make it unto the Lord. Again, by this same logic, we can just celebrate Halloween and make it unto the Lord, too. I mean, Brian might as well just start defending Halloween now because that's where his logic is leading. But just to end this video off, uh, I'm going to show the origins of this word Christmas and why it's actually blasphemy to say Merry Christmas. Because here's what you're saying. This is on Wikipedia, the article about Christmas. I know Brian's followers are going to say, well, you're going to a, a, a non-biblical source to prove your point. Yeah, kind of like Brian did in his video, but side issue. So it says here on etymology, Christmas is, shortened, is a shortened form of Christ's Mass. The word recorded in Christ's Messi in 1038 and Christ's Messi in 1131, uh, you know, Greek Christos, translation Hebrew Messiah, meaning anointed, uh, Messi from the Latin Mass, which is the celebration of the Eucharist. The form Christ Mass is historically used, but is now considered archaic and dialectical. The term derives from Middle English Christ Mass, meaning Christian Mass. Xmas is an abbreviation of Christmas, found particularly in print based on the letter Chi X, uh, Christos Christ, through numerous style guides that uh, discourage its use. This abbreviation, pre uh, predecessor in Middle East Middle English, is an abbreviation for, and it gives some Greek word there. So, what is it basically saying? What does Christmas mean? Christ Mass. The Roman Catholic holiday of, or the Roman Catholic custom of the Mass. So when you're saying Merry Christmas, and you know what the Mass is too, by the way, it's a celebration of Christ's death. So when you're saying Merry Christmas, you're saying Merry Christ's death, basically. So when you're saying Merry Christmas, you're blaspheming Jesus Christ. And Brian Dellinger doing his video, The Unknown God of Christmas. Um, Jesus Christ is not the God of Christmas. Give me a break, Brian. You're, you're just foolish. Okay? You're, you're a novice. Okay. So when you're saying Christ Mass, yes, it is a Roman Catholic holiday. This Christmas, this unbiblical Christmas. But just don't be deceived by Brian's lies about the, about, oh, it's liberty, it's liberty. No, it's not. Okay, Brian is leading his followers astray by getting them to observe this wicked heathen custom. Don't be deceived by Brian. He's prideful, he's arrogant, he's a liar. And my cat is going insane. I've got to give him some attention now. So anyway, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. And remember, don't learn the way of the heathen. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 2 to 4. Goodbye.